Choosing between alternative statistical models is an important and indeed often essential part of analysing ecological and biological data. The Littlewood Ratio Test is a common statistical tool for choosing between two competing models. However, unless one of these models is a special case of the other, a so-called nested comparison, then applying the Littlewood Ratio Test is in practice problematic. We present a simple computational intensive approach which allows the Littlewood Ratio Test to be applied in more general circumstances. We illustrate our methodology by analysing data collected to explore factors affecting tick questing abundance in the Scottish Highlands. Determinants of tick abundance are important as ticks are a primary vector for zoonotic and animal pathogens such as Borrelia, the cause of agent of Lyme disease in humans, and Louping Ill virus in sheep and grouse. Data comprising 800 blanket drags from across different Highland estates in Scotland were analysed using a range of statistical models appropriate for count data. Due to the complexity of the distribution of the counts, it was necessary to compare models with different probability distributions, and some of these comparisons needed to be between non-nested models. A perceived limitation of the Littlewood Ratio test is that it is not applicable to non-nested model comparisons. This is incorrect, and by using simulation, the Littlewood Ratio test can be used efficiently and effectively to compare non-nested models. Consider a simple example. We want to select between some model, model A, and some other model, model B, as having the better relative fit to the observed data. We illustrate this by simulating a medium-sized data set from a parcel model, whose mean depends upon two variables, x and z, and then comparing the fit of a parcel GLM which contains x as an explanatory variable, this is model A, against that of a parcel GLM which contains z as an explanatory variable, this is model B. In this example, neither model is true, but model A provides a much better approximation to truth than model B. The first step in the computation is to calculate the observed value of the Littlewood Ratio test statistic. For a simple example, this is equal to approximately minus 50, as shown by the purple line in the graph. The second step is to simulate a data set from Model A, and then fit both Model A and Model B to this data set, and calculate the value of the Littlewood Ratio test statistic. By repeating this many times, as shown in the animation, we can estimate the distribution of the Littlewood Ratio test statistic under the null hypothesis that the data were indeed generated from Model A and thereby obtain a p-value under the null hypothesis that model A is a true model. For the simple example, we obtain a p-value of 0.482, suggesting that the observed Littlewood Ratio test statistic is consistent with that obtained under model A. Finally, we repeat the same process, but for where the data are simulated from model B. This is shown by the animation in red. This gives us a p-value under the assumption that model B is true. For our simple example, this is equal to less than 0.001, suggesting that the observed Littlewood Ratio test statistic would have been very unlikely to arise if Model B were the true model. To choose between Model A and Model B, we compare the original value of the Littlewood Ratio test statistic using the observed data with the distribution of the Littlewood Ratio test statistic assuming that Model A is a true model, and then assuming Model B is a true model. In this case, we conclude that the data are consistent with Model A, but not with Model B, and therefore select Model A as being the most appropriate model for these data. Applying our likelihood ratio test methodology to the tick abundance data, we find that a negative binomial hurdle model is supported over a negative binomial zero inflated model. This is a non-nested model comparison, and that habitat type and the presence of deer, along with seasonal variation, are strongly supported as correlated to tick questing abundance. Thank you for listening to this podcast. Full details of the methodology and results are contained within our paper.